to this week. In this week, we take you to Malaco, where a peace dialogue has just ended with participants denouncing violence. Denouncing violence and agreeing to strengthen peaceful coexistence amongst tribes, more than 500 internally displaced people participated in a three-day peace dialogue inside the Protection of Civilians site in Malakal. Matthew Bichol, the chairman of the IDP Peace and Security Council, said that all forms of hate speech among communities must stop, adding that communities wanted lasting peace. <laughs> We came here today to discuss on what can rescue us from a muddy place to a clean place. Today we open our hearts. We do not come here to inflict problems on each other. I will forgive a man who wrongs me. We must avoid wrongs from the past. At the peace dialogue which brought together women, children and the elderly, a senior official from the United Nations mission in South Sudan, who is also the head of security in the protection of civilian site, urged communities to continue with dialogue amongst themselves. The conflict has generally subsided and the parties, the SPLA and SPLA who have agreed to shoot the path of peace. It is important that the various ethnic groups that reside within the PLC site find better ways to renounce violence and coexist peacefully. Women representatives at the Peace Dialogue strongly appealed to all groups within the protection site to work for peace and embrace harmony, highlighting that women and children were most vulnerable to all forms of violence. Let us own what we resolved here today so that we can implement it in full. At the conclusion of the peace dialogue, diverse communities living in the protection of civilian site in Malakal vowed to continue to dialogue and promised to implement resolutions reached in their peace forum. The Malakal protection of civilian site has 47,000 people. You should preach the gospel of forgiveness and healing. The South Sudan you want, in my weak opinion, is South Sudan of peace. Welcome back. A couple of days ago, the United Nations held a press conference, and here are some of the highlights. In a statement attributed to the Secretary General of the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon, and read by the United Nations Mission in South Sudan spokesperson, Ariane Quinter, the Secretary General expressed his concerns over the party's deadlock to the establishment of 28 states and the failure of the parties in meeting a January 22nd deadline to establish the transitional government of national unity. He stressed that the formation of the traditional government is an essential step in implementing the peace agreement and laying the foundation for peace and stability in South Sudan. The spokesperson also said that there has been an increase in the number of internally displaced people seeking safety in Bentiu. The protection site at Bentiu now has about 120,000 people. We think there is an increase of numbers in Bentiu. There's been for the last couple of weeks 
because of food scarcity in the, in the area. The Anya's chief of civil affairs division, Ali Hassan, gave a brief of what the civil affairs division does in conflict management and mitigation, pinpointing some concerns. Absence of law enforcement, absence of, of, of judiciary, absence of, of, of you know, traditional mechanisms that has evaporated, lack of implementation of, of whatever agreements they reach, one side uh, will not implement and that regenerates revenge. Hassan said that support to various communities in mitigating conflict was making a difference at the grassroots. Following up on this week, we take you to our Day in the Life segment, where we follow one of our uniformed peacekeepers and they explain to us what they do. A regular day for me starts at 6 o'clock in the morning. I do my five kilometers running, take my shower, breakfast, and then I uh, run off to the office to start. My name is Bart Coppens. I'm a lieutenant colonel from the police from the Netherlands. In my position here, I'm uh, the deputy coordinator of protection of civilians on the PUC sites in Juba. I usually get into the office at 7.30, checking all my mails, and I check what I have to do for all the operations during the day. At 8.30, we have a, a daily management briefing. And after the briefing, um, I give the teams uh, orders what they can do at that day on the POCs here in Juba. And during the day, it depends what kind of operations that we have. I visit the teams to see what's going on and if I can uh, be assistance. The job that I do here is uh, not uh, very different than I do the job at home, because at home I'm also an operation commander for bigger events and upscaled uh, incidents. Uh, the only the biggest difference is here the, is the climate and the weather. That's the biggest difference. The biggest difference that the uh, UNPOL police is making in the lives of the people who are living in the PUCs is that they can close their eyes at night easy, with the feeling that uh, nobody would harm uh, them or their family. So they, we bring security. The biggest challenges that we are facing as UNPOL carrying out our job is the diversity of the people that we work with inside the UN organization and also inside the POCs, uh, the people who live there. That's the biggest challenge. Everybody has a different cultural background. Uh, you have to respect uh, everybody's religion, you have to respect everybody's cultural background, what you're doing, where you're coming from, and not everybody has the same interest to reach one goal. We try to reach that point to everybody, to train everybody, to make them aware about the differences that are within the people and during updating the training programs, we try to keep uh, completely actual and updated what to do and how to handle. The thing that makes me the most happy in my job is when I visit uh, the hospital in the POCs and I see that there are newborn babies so that there are still people who believe in the future that they are trying to give an, another new living being uh, a life in this planet and especially in South Sudan. And of course also when you give a ball to children in the POCs that smile on the face that's unpayable. Mostly the day for me ends uh, around uh, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, it depends what kind of operations do we have. But then afterwards uh, I go back to my accommodation and then uh, read a book and go on time to bed, mostly around 10 o'clock in the evening. I really hope that in 2016 uh, the peace agreement really is implemented and, uh, and that everybody at a certain point can wake up in peace and harmony and they can live a nice life as everybody else. In our last story, both sides to the South Sudanese peace agreement continue to seek lasting solutions. We leave you with sights and sounds from a recent trip to Pagak by the SPLM in opposition. Peace is very popular in South Sudan. We just need the support of the uh, UN, we need the support of everybody, international community, Troika, EU. Uh, let uh, the world support us, let God support us, let Africa support us so that we bring back our country to reconciliation, to healing. Uh, there are also people of Pagagar passing their greeting to people of Juba.
peace is on course. No backtrack, no going backward. We are going forward. Uh, we have to implement this peace.